He died on the cross in shame and misery. He came on earth to bring salvation for us, that we might be free from sin. Oh, what love. Oh, what wondrous love no language can express. Greetings to all our loved and valued viewers. Today, we are on lesson six, and we invite you to focus on the cross and see the Lamb of God that taketh away all the sin of the earth. Let us pray. Father in heaven, once again we come before the throne of grace, marveling at your love, the love for us sinners, the love that you showed at the cross, so that all of us may have our sins forgiven and will have the ticket to go to heaven through the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Amen. John chapter 3, verses 14 to 15, is our core text for our lesson today. And it reads, As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so that the Son of Man must be lifted, so that the, everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Our trust today is Jesus on the cross. We are also going to focus on what this death means for the promise of eternal life. He died for us. It's a simple declarative statement, which is in the active voice. What is the active voice? It is the voice that is used by a writer when he or she wants the readers to focus on the subject and the action that is done or performed by the subject. In this title, we see Jesus as the subject. What is Jesus doing? We see him dying on the cross. And we also find that we have the object that is humanity. Jesus is the core of our lesson today and his death. The crucial idea is that Christ was slain from the foundation of the earth. When we read Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, it reads, Christ is the lamb that was slaughtered before the world was made. This is paraphrased. What does that mean? It means that Christ is the symbolic lamb that died thousands of years ago, before creation or before the creation of this earth. Revelation 13 verse 8 presents the plan of salvation which was put in place way before the creation of the world. Therefore, central to our lesson today is the plan of salvation, which was brought about by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. So this clearly means that our redemption was not an afterthought. God planned it right before men were created. What love that we had, that God showed to us. So since it was not an afterthought, it was not even a plan which was formulated when Adam had sinned in the Garden of Eden. No, it wasn't. It was an unfolding of the principles that from eternal ages have been the foundation of God's throne. Also central, to the whole plan of salvation is the substitutional death of Jesus, which was symbolized for centuries by animal sacrifices. I think all of us, we are familiar with the issue of sacrifices in the temple or in the sanctuary. When a human being or when a person sinned, the person was supposed to get an animal and the, the animal was supposed to be a sacrifice 
for the atonement of his or her sins. So each animal was a symbol of Jesus' death on the cross. As the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And we find that in John chapter 1, verse 29. Jesus' whole life was prefaced to the death on the cross. At the cross, he defeated the kingdom of the devil. He defeated Satan. At the cross, when he cried, it is finished. Yes, he was implying that the pain or the agony that he was going through had ended. But that wasn't the, the story. By crying out loudly, it is finished. Jesus Christ meant that he had won the battle of sin for you and for me. The writer Haskell says, it was at the cross that the infinite love of Christ and the unbounded selfishness of Satan stood face to face. But what is the meaning of the cross? Before we end this lesson, we need to understand that we're talking about the death at the cross. If you have not understood anything from what we have just said now, please take note of this. I have five points that I'm going to present to in, in, in trying to explain the meaning of the cross. The cross is the supreme revelation of God's justice against sin. In Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to 26, supports this. Number two, the cross is the supreme revelation of God's love for sinners. And this is expressed again in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. The cross is the greatest source of power to break the chains of sin. Romans chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. Point number four. The cross is our only home of eternal life. This we get in Philippians chapter 3, verses 9 to 11. The cross, finally, is the only antidote against a future rebellion in the universe. And John, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 3, gives us this solution. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Heaven is interested in our salvation, saints. So what shall we do? Shall we be careless? As though it were a small matter whether we are saved or lost. Shall we slight the sacrifice that has been made for us? God's spirit will not always be grieved. It will depart if grieved a little longer. The great sacrifice that has been made to save souls shows us that these souls are worth. Jesus could not have come to die for worthless souls. You are precious. You are valued by Christ. Hence, he hung on the cross so that you may have eternal life. When the precious soul is once lost, it is lost forever. I don't think we need to miss this chance to lose our souls after this great sacrifice. Thank you so much for listening. Let us pray. Kind and everlasting Father, I want to thank you for the great sacrifice of the cross. Thank you for coming down to rescue us from the worst state of our sinful nature. Thank you, Jesus, for your matchless, for your love that cannot be matched by anything else. Thank you for your unconditional love as well. As we continue to learn about the cross, 
plant in our hearts the love to want to do the best out of our lives, out of our sinful lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.